Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Witty Banter Book Club podcast. I am Maddie, here with... Courtney, hello, and today Maddie and I are reviewing A Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden. Now, this is a special episode because this author sent us this book and lots of stickers and, like, fun stuff with it, and she also signed the book for us, so, so nice. Thank you, Kate. Um... We will be, if you if you haven't joined us before, uh, the way this goes is Maddie and I will talk a little bit about um, whether or not we'd recommend it. We'll rate it on our four pillars, um, which I'll talk about when we get there. But first, I'm going to give you a little mm, synopsis. Uh, also, no spoilers. Synopsis. Don't worry. There's no spoilers yeah. yet. We'll let you know no when we get spoilers. to spoilers. We do the first half of our episode is spoiler free. I will I will sound the alarm when we're about to go into spoiler territory. So those of you who would like to read the book can scoot and skedaddle on out of here. But uh, a dawn of onyx follows Arwen, a healer, um, in this world which is set up in different kingdoms based on like different types of like rocks and minerals. Um, so that's interesting. That's fun. It did, it was kind of giving like a Kotar, like the courts, um, they're mm-hmm. just based on like rocks instead of um, seasons, seasons or times yeah. of day. Um, which is fine. Uh, it takes place in a war torn, not war torn country, but some of these different uh, kingdoms are fighting against each other, right? Um, and so. Arwen gets herself into a little bit of a pickle because her brother's been a bad boy uh, and she ends up as a healer in the enemy kingdom, the Onyx kingdom, uh, where she runs into a person named Cain who has some secrets. Um, Of course, this is a fantasy book, so there are a few twists and turns. There's some political stuff going on and it is also a romance. Hello, yes. Um, so there's some things developing, if you will, between Arwen and Cain throughout the book, um, while all these other plots are unfolding with the war and with, like, all these secret things going on. Arwen has some abilities that are inexplicable that we do get an explanation for. Um, and then at the end, you know, there's some betrayals, that sort of thing. Your typical, I would say your typical fantasy romance recipe Mm -hmm. um we'll break that down a little bit more the further we get into this episode but that's kind of a general synopsis it does involve fae that's like this brand of fantasy right which the girlies are all into nowadays so very like a kotar adjacent i'd say very sarah j mass adjacent Mm -hmm. um with that being said um maddie would you recommend this book to a fellow reader um, I think that if they're into this sort of thing, I would. Um, so if they're like, oh, I'm looking for like a little short fantasy, super easy read, you know, this is this, I would recommend it to them for sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd go and just be like, you need to read this book. Like you've got to read it to just anybody, but definitely to people who are, are into this genre, I would say yes. I think I would agree with that. And like, as time has gone on, the book girlies have started to like delineate themselves, right? Like we're separating ourselves into courts. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Um, and there are there are those who dabble in many different areas. Uh, I am I am one of those. Uh, yeah, werewolves, and, you know, yeah, wolves, dragons, fae. But then we also like I love Emily Henry. I love Sarah Adams. Those are all mm-hmm. more real world esque. Um, but I do think that like I don't I don't I wouldn't suggest this as like the first book in someone's like fantasy romance um journey, I would mm-hmm. say. I, I would start with something like maybe fourth wing or something like that. Just to like I, I think um you have to read books in that particular area that like not just because they have a lot of hype, but like certain ones that like get you into the door, mm-hmm. right? I, I don't I don't feel like I'm articulating this well, but there are I feel like books that are better at like starting off in that particular yes. area. 
I think that this book, it was written in 2022, and I feel like it was ri- written kind of in response to Akatar, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, the not just, like, the popularity of Faye and everything like that and the systems and everything like that, but it also feels like... You know what it kind of feels like? It kind mm-hmm. of also felt like Fourth Wing, and Fourth Wing came out after this. So, like, it, it kind of has that same feel to it yeah. but i think that if you wanted to know if you were interested in those type of books i would read akatar and fourth wing first before reading this one yeah yeah and there are, i mean here's the thing too in the last decade or so because i'm the sarah j mass throne of glass books have been out for a while even the mm-hmm. akotar ones at this, this book this now. book reminded me a lot also of throne of glass yeah so it's just kind of like in that general area and here's the thing too about like fantasy writing just like all other romance writing for the most part it's pretty formulaic um so like I would say parts of this were like expected and stuff like that I like I absolutely would recommend this to my friends who I know liked Akotar liked fourth wing I'm surprised Grace didn't like 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 it as much as I thought that she would because this seems like something that she'd actually really like I know um I don't know, I'll have to ask her about it yeah. now that we've read it, because uh, I didn't even look at what her review is. I know she told me um, when I told her we were reading it that she didn't give it like a super, super high score. So I'll have to to see what her thoughts are. But I, I mean, and we'll get to this later. I still enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah. But, um, okay. And then would you recommend this book to someone under the no. age of 18? No. <laughs> I would not. There is, there for the smut in here, it's like, what, it happens like, one and a half times um and the the full time is pretty descriptive so i would say yeah. no uh, i would not recommend it to somebody under the age of 18 i would i would say so too i don't think it's as intense as like a lot of the sarah j mass mm-hmm. books i mean or at least the akotar ones i maybe it's it would, comparable it, to like a court of thorns and roses like the first right specifically. right but um it went on for a while it was like five pages i know i was like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um but yeah it does have that saucy element if you will mm-hmm. that makes it uh not palatable i would say for children mm-hmm. um so unfortunately my one sister who's not yet of age should not be reading this mom if you're watching um my other two though hey girls go ahead just don't talk to me about it after because i don't want to know you know like (laughs) we're related we shouldn't talk about those things uh (laughs) at least not me and mine i don't know anyways uh (laughs) now we're going to talk about our four pillars which are witty banter surprise surprise uh character development smut and realism um so oh and we do this on a scale of one to five because 10 is simply too many uh and if you spend any time on goodreads you know that the book girlies all go by a five scale okay so them's the rules um but maddie on a scale of one to five what would you rate the witty banter in this book like a two i didn't think that they had a lot of witty banter i definitely think that it was attempted for them to have witty banter but i i just didn't really feel like they had that like Mm -hmm. level of chemistry together i think that they had chemistry but not in like the same way that witty banter like enemies to it was kind of set up supposed to be kind of like an enemies to lovers like a tamlin and Feyre sort of vibe and i feel the i kind of feel the same way about like their romance that i did tamlin and Feyre, where i'm just like okay but i will say that arwen is much more likable in my opinion than Feyre is everybody yeah. here knows how i feel about Feyre. i hate her ass and so like i actually thought that arwen was like better but i still think that their chemistry and romance was so similar to tamlin and pharaoh's like actual romance you know what i mean there's a lot of similarities that we might have to go into in like the spoilers but like her family dynamic i feel like is pretty similar yeah except for she's the oldest um but i think i mean the thing okay so with the witty banter in particular like normally enemies to lovers is a very i would say fertile ground to Mm -hmm. uh create witty banter 
there's a the the dynamic between these two characters changes a lot throughout the book based on like what information they're working off of and so like sometimes they're enemies sometimes they're not really um when they start when they initially meet he is not who she thinks he is um Mm -hmm. and so like their interactions change after she kind of figures it out but I, I wouldn't say it was as, like, categorically opposed as as they normally are. Yeah. Um, so I think there was, like, a little bit less of that. I still thought the dialogue was pretty good, and there were, like, parts where I could see that they, like, were flirting and stuff. So mm-hmm. I, I think I'll give it, like, a three. I don't think it was anything, like, crazy, but I thought it, I, you know it moved the story along and um because it wasn't like a true enemies to lovers i don't think like it it changes the dynamic of the dialogue yeah. a lot especially in like yeah. a fantasy setting and I, I mean a great example of like really good witty banter in a fantasy setting is fourth wing i think right um that one is particularly good but yeah i think i think it's a three and that's not to say that it it was bad either it was just not like i wouldn't consider it particularly yeah especially yeah the 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 plot setup but um exactly so scale of one to five what would you rate the character development um i think that for arwen she she did she changed a little bit in her approach to things throughout Mm. the story, but I think the real change is yet to come for her because there's a lot of stuff that we find out at the end of the book that we, um, that's going to impact her life. And then like things happen at the end of the book as well. Betrayals, things along those lines, um, that will impact her overall character development more so. Kane, I don't think honestly like this is like a one thing I re- I really don't like like we didn't really get like we got a lot of him but I felt like we didn't get a lot of him you know what I mean like we yeah. saw him a lot but we didn't learn a lot about him we learned a little bit about you know his family life and that sort of stuff throughout the book but like who he is really like I felt like it's still kind of up in the air at this mm-hmm. point in the story and things are going to be changing now as to like what, is, what has just happened. Um, and so I don't think he's either like had character development. Maybe yeah. his was like opening up a little bit to her, but like that's to be expected just to move a plot along, not just for yeah. like character development sake. So I would give it like a three probably. Okay. Or maybe, I'm... maybe a four. I think I'd give it a four actually. Cause I thought Arwen's is pretty good. And I'm actually like, I actually do want to know what happens. I think so, too. I think, okay, I I have very similar sentiments. I think this first book is a lot of, like, exposition, world building, um, creating dynamics, Mm -hmm. backstories for the characters, that sort of thing. And I do think that the end of this book is a really good setup for a lot of, like, personal changes in the next book. But I did like a lot of the transformations that Arwen had. You know, she was very, like, focused on protecting her family somewhat to her own expense for a while. She was very like sheltered, stayed in the same place for a very long time. And then was like forced as many of our heroines are into an unfamiliar world where she has to like reshape her perceptions of the world she grew up in and also like shift her family dynamics because she's changing as a person and she's gaining like all these experiences. Um, something that I really like about her too um I and I guess I do compare this a lot to like Okotar and I find her a lot more likable than Vera as well and I think it's because like this the the skill that she has right her profession and somewhat of like there's magic in this book hello Mm -hmm. no shocker there Um, (laughs) like her her abilities and also her profession have to do with like healing right Right. so that is a little bit more compelling of like a contribution to a storyline than like some of these other ones that I've read. Painting. Uh, right. Well, I hate like, Feyre so much. I just hate, I, <laughs> before we talk about her later, I just hate Feyre so I much. 
and like there there's a lot of like female heroines too like in throne of glass and stuff where like they're really badass and that's cool like they're assassins or they're they're pickpockets Mm -hmm. and stuff like that that's cool but like i i like her her drive and stuff like that and her compassion and i think uh it's interesting to see her become more of like a determined person Mm -hmm. throughout and also just somebody who sticks up for herself a little bit more so i think i thought it was pretty good and i think it's a really good foundation going forward he didn't have a lot i think we'll see more of the dynamic develop between them and him personally in the next book so i don't i'm not gonna like disqualify that um so i think i think i'll give it a four as yeah i think what like one thing and we'll talk about this like in the overall thing is like i liked this book um and i definitely have like some issues with it that we will talk about because we cannot be bought kate just kidding i like (laughs) well i'm not just kidding we can't be bought but i did like your book a lot yes um but i do have like some things and like i want to talk about like we'll talk about it when i get to like what my overall score is but like there are reasons why i rate it what i do and then like reasons why i have like high hopes for like the next Mm -hmm. things to come so we'll talk about yeah but i want to (laughs) yeah lay that out yeah lay it out there there. lay it out there because like yeah okay okay um so scale of one to five what would you rate the smut in the book uh um i don't know if i'm just smutted out like i don't know like i'm just like kind of low-key sick of it um and that's like not a good thing because the like our next book we're reading is just like a straight up romance book and i know it's gonna be in there which is a, it's a sarah adams book too and i know that there's smut in it like i heard i heard through the grapevine and by the grapevine i mean instagram reels that there's smut in it yeah. so i know um but like i don't know if it's just because i'm sick of it like it was fine you know it was like a little saucy or whatever um <laughs> I keep it like a three like I but I'm also sick of smut so just keep that in mind like for the next like month that we go through these last few romance books before we start our not romance series that we're doing um there's a little bit of romance in that series but like you know but like there's a lot of characters in that series so it's not as like yeah exactly um but yeah i give like a three but keep it in mind like i'm not into smut right now like that is just not my vibe so maybe courtney is better to say how the smut in this book is i go through like spells like that too or or times where i'm just like fantasied out and i need to Mm -hmm. read other stuff and then there's times where i'll read like one fantasy book and then i need to consume like 10 right um so I, I think reading, like, generally is just kind of, like, a cyclical thing. Like, you you find things that you like, but it doesn't mean that you want to read that back-to-back all the time, which is right. where, like, it's nice for us sometimes. Like, like when we did the Harry Potter series, that was such a good palate cleanser for a while. Um, mm-hmm. And so, like, I will say, like, I, I get a little tired of it, too. Right now, I'm not in, like, a super crazy like i need to be reading that specifically but it's also not like off-putting to me or anything i think this particular book and i we've talked about this before in here but smut is like kind of a different category where you have a couple of different things to consider like frequency intensity quality that sort of thing i did feel like the the buildup of tension throughout the book right um despite mm-hmm. what we talked about earlier with like the dialogue and stuff um and I feel like a lot of times with these books, there's kind of like a moment, a culmination of all this tension, um, but especially in series like the first book, normally with like these particular, like the fae genre, there's not like a ton. It, it happens like once or twice. And then it, in the subsequent books, it's like when it goes kind of crazy. Right. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> we will see. Um, but I mean, like I thought, I thought this one like this smut in this book it was i would say like relatively in, intense relatively spicy descriptive that sort of thing obviously it was infrequent because it only happened mm-hmm. 1.5 times um but i did think that the tension build up was pretty good so i think i'll give it a four um did you say three or two i gave it a three 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. So at same kind of ballpark. Um, it's not. There was like... no banned words used. Like it was fine. Yes. It just. I'm not. I am not into the, the smut right now. But I think it it had everything that I would that I look for it, mm-hmm. <laughs> when I um want to read that sort of thing. So I, I thought it was okay. Not. It's not like the best, most compelling smut I've ever read. <laughs> but um. Okay, do you? We should probably do a magic system. Instead yes, of realism. instead of realism. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> um, so sometimes Maddie and I will sw- switch up this particular category because all the other ones are generally applicable. Like, smut isn't sometimes, right? Like we didn't do right. that for Harry Potter. Right. But, no, there was no um, smut in Harry Potter. So. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> Could you imagine no. like Snape just getting it on with Professor McGonagall? Oh. Harry's like. You'll never guess what I just accidentally walked in in on, guys. Traumatizing. Traumatizing indeed. But <laughs> yeah. so we will we'll rate the magic system scale of one to five. I think this is probably a four. It is I think that the magic system is pretty well thought out. There's a couple of parts where I'm like a little confused, but it is still just the first book. And we've talked about this, but like um ninth house and like some of the other ones that like have good magic systems but like they're not fully developed until later on Mm -hmm. in the story anyway so i would give it a four i thought it was pretty good i think that most of the things make sense um yeah there's just like a couple of things that (laughs) i don't really understand yet but i don't think i meant to yeah i get that i think like I almost, I feel like I have a hard time gauging this now with specifically with like the Fey books because I it, it happened to me too <laughs> with the reading werewolf books to where like you just become so familiarized with like the, the general myths and stuff that mm-hmm. that authors build off of to create these stories that like going into this I know generally like what people like what the myths about Fey are and like authors will differentiate their magic systems and stuff like that but it still kind of functions from the same core principles mm-hmm. so I feel like I don't even have a good gauge of whether or not like the magic systems are laid out super well but I will say comparing this book to our last book it was a lot easier to follow what was happening and like who the different people were and what their abilities were Mm -hmm. the last one was just crazy and i know we jumped in on the third the third book but like this one it was easy to follow which i think is a good indicator that the magic system was built well i feel like i can't even compare it to ninth house because ninth house is so unique in a lot of ways right and like that one I was really impressed with because I felt like it was truly, like, super original. This one's mm-hmm. good. There's different spins. I mean, like, the Fae can transform into, like, different beasts, essentially, which is something that we see a little bit in a Kotar. Right. I was going to say, that's how a Kotar starts is with... Mm-hmm. With a, uh, a shifter. And, like, yeah. there... I, I will also say, too... It, and you haven't gotten to, <laughs> in in Throne of Glass. There are also like witches. Like there are other beings that possess and harness magic mm-hmm. within these worlds. So there's a little bit of like witchcraft in the in this story as well. Overall, I thought it was laid out pretty pretty good. Um, so mm-hmm. I think I'll give it a four as well. Um, yeah. But it, it's it's pretty I would say s- standard for mm-hmm. <laughs> for this type of book. So yeah. Um, Okay, what would you rate this book overall on a scale of one to five? I gave it a four, a okay. low four, though. It is not a high four. Um, and the reason for that is that I feel like I can see the vision. I can mm-hmm. see, like, what's coming. Like I like, And, like, I actually want to know what happens next. Uh, with Akatar, like, if you guys watch those, like, I did not care. Like, you could not get me to care about what happens to Feyre at the end of Akatar. Because Feyre sucks. Like, I just don't like... Like, I, Feyre is just not a likable main character. I loved um, Silver, Flame. Silver Flames, which is not about Feyre. So, like, it's it's a Feyre problem. Um, also, the Fey in here, I was actually more okay with these Fey because they don't have wings. I think that's what's doing it for me, is I hate the wing part. I think the wings is what's okay. just giving me the ick about fairies. Um... 
I also think that Kane reminded me a lot of Zayden um, mm-hmm. from Fourth Wing. And we'll talk about this in the spoilers, but I kind of low-key, like, okay, listen, I've been, like, low-key kind of shitting on uh, Fourth Wing recently. And, like, I loved it, right? But, like, the more things that I read that were written prior to that, I'm like, she literally just copied this stuff. And I feel like she copied parts of Kane's personality for Zayden because there are so many similarities that I was like, this is suspicious. Yeah, and he wasn't quite as, like, I I didn't really see a lot of, they they always have, like, the tall, dark, handsome, of course, man. The Ian Summer handler. <laughs> is that his name? Summer Halder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you. But yeah, they all have like the tall, dark, handsome Nightman. Um, <laughs> I know. Nightman. Uh, <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> champion of the sun. Um, yeah. Anyways, I don't even remember. <laughs> so, they, all, they all have like that character, right? Specifically like Bay Books. Whatever. That's totally fine. Um, I didn't get. I definitely see more like Zayden. It wasn't really giving like Ray Sand to me. No. Um, a little bit more like if Tamlin was like more likable. Yeah, yeah, and had dark hair and stuff. Well, actually, Tamlin is fine in the first book. Like he's he's generally likable in the first one. It's the second one when he's problematic. So maybe maybe Kane will be <laughs> we'll problematic we ahead. See. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, like I do think these authors stay somewhat in a mold, which I also will talk about in the spoilers, because, like, I have just general qualms with this genre, not, like, this author, but I I think it's also, like, a low four, um, the the bottom part of the four scale. I I agree with the sentiment that, like, I do want to read the rest of the series, which is a good indicator, Mm -hmm. um, and for a first book, I thought this one was pretty good, these books at this point to me too are pretty predictable, but I'm not going to like detract on my score. Right. Because of that. That's uh-huh. something else I want to talk about in the spoilers yeah. is like, I feel like for some of these, like it's hard to be surprised over like mm-hmm. some of the outcomes just from having read fantasy books before. Well, I think um, too, like you and I specifically also have like a good, foundational knowledge in uh foreshadowing in literature thank you high school english teacher who shall remain yeah. unnamed um yeah thanks i had she, you for three years <laughs> she was a terror but we we're both excellent writers because yes of <laughs> uh but like i pick up on foreshadowing and you do too you're really good at predicting plot twists and stuff in movies yeah. and books and stuff like that but like the foreshadowing in these books is like I, I'm genuinely like shocked when people are surprised by like the twists that come and stuff. Yeah, I, it's either because they're just starting out or they just they didn't have that that great English teacher, the one English teacher we all all of us smart people had. Yeah, growing up, um, they make yeah. or break you. But uh, yeah, I, I do find them predictable, but it, it doesn't. I'm I have to like actively make sure that that doesn't detract from like the enjoyment or the score for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so while I did find this book like somewhat predictable, it's because it had good like foundations laid out throughout. Like you have to, you can't just have these twists that don't have any sort of like, right build up in the story, or it doesn't make sense, or you have to like do backwards explaining which is just right so i I, I think it was a four also but i really liked the first like 150 pages of the book and i really Mm -hmm. liked the last hundred there is about 100 pages in there where i was just like okay like we're kind of doing a lot of like repetitive stuff here and like we could be maybe learning a little bit more about kane (laughs) but uh, like a good use of the space but I did like I like I was pretty hooked from like the beginning, and yeah. I think that maybe part of it was me drawing a lot of parallels to Akatar, which I hated. By the way, I don't know if I've mentioned that in this episode so far. Is that like I literally hated Akatar, um, and then like I like the ending. I was just like really interested in, and it, I like this book reminds me a lot of, um. Crown of Midnight. I had to look what it was called for a second. I was like, what what number is that? Um 
but yeah like i like i i generally liked it i i do want to know what happens next and i probably will at some point in time finish off the series i'm just a little busy right now but yeah. there is one thing that i feel like we can talk about no we'll talk about the spoilers okay yeah Which is a good segue uh, yeah that will be beginning now so yeah so you... get out of here yeah, you, if you haven't read this book, I think you probably should, especially if you like the Fey area of romance. Um, mm -hmm. So you should get out of here and read it. Yeah. And come back to us and finish out this episode. If yeah. you have read it, um, or if you're just not like a big fantasy reader and for some reason you're still like listening to this particular episode, go ahead and stay with us. Um, hey. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I'll all you Kotar girlies are going to have some, I think, some things to say. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so this is it. The official start okay. of our so spoiler section. My least favorite thing about this book is how frequently he calls her bird. It yeah. bothers me so much. He calls her it every single time they talk. He calls her it two or three times. I'm just not like crazy about that particular nickname either. Like it reminds me a little bit of... When we were, uh, tw whatever the last twisted book is, when Christian was calling her butterfly, Ugh, I just don't even remind like, me of those books. I like, I do like when they have like, okay, like a fourth wing comparison here. I loved when he called Violet violence, like that. that okay, that one's like a fun little, you know. But like, why can't? Why do they all have to be like weird little? Well. Bird, I, I did like it because it's, like, the nickname itself is about, like, her being, like, caged in. And, like, what we learn about her, like, she's obviously been caged in her entire life. And, like, he, there's even, like, a joke that they make about, how, she's like, why do you call me Bird? And he's like, because you're locked in my dungeon, like, d locked in a dungeon right now. Like, you're literally in a cage. Yeah. So, like, I I did like the nickname. I just think it's used, like, way too, way too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty frequent i however was i'm just not, like not a huge fan of that of mm -hmm. bird for some reason i can't even really articulate why it doesn't it just doesn't strike my particular fancy i also um, think like his last name's ravenwood and like he like sends ravens and stuff so like birds are like okay also endearing to him in my head at least that's what i was thinking that's fair or like cute i don't know um yeah, okay just, personally was not super into that but again it didn't like detract from the story really no he just she just he just says it so often i'm like oh my god please <laughs> we get it yeah maybe specify what kind of bird um anyway yeah okay okay so, oh you go you go all right so this book starts out almost identical to akatar <laughs> yeah um difference she's not hunting um the healer but also kind of mm, i don't want to get too much into spoilers be uh, for other books in this but there are specific spoilers from other books that mm -hmm. i want to like talk about so like if you have not read throne of glass if you have like the series of throne of glass like the entire series because i don't know when this exact spoiler occurs but like at some point this happens in the book so i don't want you around for that um, if you haven't read Fourth Wing or Iron Flame or Akatar, yeah. any of those books, I would just skip these if you have or if you're in the process of reading those. Um, because all right, I'm gonna move on to my spoilers now. Okay, this is your final warning. If you're driving, turn down the volume. Okay, anyway. <laughs> For like so, what, like a couple minutes. Yeah, yeah. 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 So okay. Well, just in general, because I feel like there's like gonna be a bunch of things that we talk yeah. about that kind of are yeah. the spoilers for those books. So like and at at this point, if you're here, honestly, you've probably read those books. So like, but if you haven't, okay. Anyway, um, so it reminds me. So I know in in Throne of Glass, I'm only on the second book. Like I have or the third book. So like, uh, Air of Fire. So like, I have not gotten that far into the story, but I have had parts of the story spoiled for me. Mm -hmm. So I know that Selena ends up being a a Lin or whatever her name is the mm -hmm. the fairy the fae yeah god or whatever i don't know something like that but that's kind of what this made like made me feel like when i was reading yeah. it is kind of like and i haven't read that part of the book yet obviously um but like it feels kind of like that 
it's very much like a combination of a Kotar and Throne of Glass, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, because, like, she she starts off kind of like Feyre and then going to the other kingdom, very much like Feyre, but she... And she's also... she. I mean, she's unique in the sense that, like, she does healing, right? Like, mm-hmm. Selena is an assassin and Feyre is a hunter and a painter. So, like, very Boo. different in those regards right but then we find out like her lineage i guess and that one's a little bit more similar to like the throne of glass route Mm -hmm. um what i have to say about this is that i'm kind of getting tired of like the same storyline and i love like in these in these fantasy romance books almost always it's there's a heroine right as right like um, a male hero, which I do like, uh, especially in like these fantasy romance books. Like it definitely draws in more of like a, a female centric crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say that these are books that like men can enjoy and should read if they can handle themselves. Colin, enough to open the book. Colin's reading Throne of Glass, so like oh, it's definitely like like a girl. Like it's a female main character, but like so was The Hunger Games. You know, like it's like yeah, yeah. I feel like like uh, once you open the the cover and start reading it doesn't necessarily matter but like a lot of times i think men will see books like this and they'll think it's like oh it's like a a girly book Mm -hmm. um and like especially the ones that are more smut centered sure but like i i'm getting like just tired of the same template where it's like a fey dude and then a girl who like either secretly has fey lineage or like she gets turned into one like and they all come from humble beginnings which is fine like it makes a compelling story but i'm like could just once just one time could like the female heroine be like born a fey or something and why does the dude always have to be a fey also like why can't we do like a lord of the rings kind of fanfic with right like, um she was born a fey well, yeah, I mean, like, but, like, you know, like, raised it, like... Right, raised as a fae. Like, secretly, like, they have a secret family lineage, or they find out later. Like, right. like, raised in a kingdom where, like, they know they're gonna, like, inherit power or something, and then they go through struggles. And then, like, when I say, like, Lord of the Rings fanfic, I'm like, can we have, like, a... a I, and, mm, I don't want to spoil this for you, so I won't say that, but, like... Where, like, the dude is, like, human or something. Like, why do they always have to right. be? And I know, I don't know. I just, I think that would be a good way to shake this these books up, these plots up. Because I just get, like, as good as they are, it's just, like, reading the same thing over and over again with, like, different levels of skill of execution mm-hmm. and then slight variations. And that's not the author's fault per se, right? Like, writing generally is very formulaic especially in like the romance and fantasy romance industry but like i don't know there's just got like somebody's got to do something a little bit different to pique my interest and you can do it in like the same world setting Mm -hmm. and stuff like that but i would just really like to see a little bit more variation Variation. yeah 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 because like i definitely i definitely know what you're saying because that's what I liked about Fourth Wing before I read it, like, literally anything else. And I realized that Fourth Wing was just a copy of literally everything else. Yeah. I liked Fourth Wing, okay? Yeah. Like, I really liked that book. But, like, still, like, it was... There's so many other par- other books that just feel like the- that book that came out before Fourth Wing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, like, not a good example of that. But, like, that's kind of what I'm hoping for is like the way I felt about fourth wing like reading something that was like entirely new and different still fantasy um yeah and like okay so like an example of this is like house of the dragon right like it's like a it's like the same story right as like game of thrones you know two two, well there's way more than two people in game of thrones but like but like two groups fighting over something Mm -hmm. right the throne And that is, while the same as Game of Thrones, it is executed much differently this time around than it was that time. And that's kind of like, the goal can still be the same, 
but just have different methods of getting there. And, and I would love to see something like you were mentioning where like, it's just somebody who's like being raised up to like, here, I'm going to give a story idea out. Okay. Get your pens and papers out. Here. Yep. Here's my story. Okay. It's like a girl who's been raised as like the princess of this kingdom for a long period of time. Like she's like 16, 17, 18 mm -hmm. years old. Depends if you want smut in there. If she didn't want, if you want smut, she's 18. Older, if you don't, yeah. she's 16. Um, she is really um not humble. Like she's like very yes. like narcissistic, thinks That's a lot about herself. Doesn't too. think thinks that because she is what she is that she doesn't need to do the trainings or any of the like war strategies. So she spends her time gallivanting and doing nothing and then either she's like on a boat and she like her boat sinks and she has to like figure out how to get herself out of the situation like everybody else is dead except for like the one hot guy also who was on the <laughs> ship um or like her her kingdom gets uh seized and yeah. there's a siege on her kingdom and everybody dies and now she's thrown into power but she has to navigate political relationships and she doesn't have the training expertise or guide to be able to do it and like has to learn yeah. by maybe loses everything and has to get it back like right, yeah i feel like that's a lot of like men's storylines so i would like yes. to see it from a female perspective especially with like the humbling that or like she's just like spent so much time in her life preparing for this role that like everything essentially bores her and something right. has to happen to like communicate to her reveal to her the gravity of the situation right um which is very, very much similar. Um, but yet, like, and I literally thought, like, almost exactly the same thing. Right. Um, so that's where I know, too, like, it can't be that hard to, like, change up the narrative a little bit. And, like, I just want something a little different. Like, you can make a powerful woman without having her start off as, like, meek or anything like that. And, like, there, I mean... With Throne of Glass, she starts off the series as an assassin, right? Like, that's Just cool an though. assassin who's been chained for uh, yeah. two years. Like, she's, oh. like... Yeah, but she's still an assassin. Right. But, and, like, she still, though, has to, like, start from the bottom and work her way mm -hmm. up. I would love to see, like, a fall from grace or, like, a big humbling moment. Um, and, like, it's always that these dudes are in, like, some... These male love interests are in some like position of power or whatever and i, I like i do appreciate the storyline of like a man in power having to like um treat his significant other as like an equal or even as like a superior depending on like what the book is what mm -hmm. magic she holds and stuff like that um but I do think, and Throne of Glass is a little bit more akin to what we're talking about now once you get later on into it. But, like, I just feel like so many of these Fae books just follow the same. And, and it's the same with, like, the, the third act betrayals and stuff. I always see them coming. And, like, it's always. great for the second book because then you have to, like, they basically have to, like, re-get to know each other and, like, redevelop right. trust and stuff like that. So it definitely creates, like, a, a plot moving forward. But again, I wouldn't be opposed to, like, writing a book where, like, the main character, the female heroine is kind of like a villain for a while who's, like, entitled right. and stuff like that. And maybe she makes, she betrays somebody at the end of the book and has to then spend time getting right. back in their good graces. You know, like, I, like, I feel like it would be cool to gender swap essentially the roles that these these characters normally have and then to, mm -hmm. to tell it from the perspective of the person who's like keeping information or who does right. the trail um i think that would just be interesting and compelling a little bit different than the, the normal stuff yeah. that we're reading and it, to, to say again like this isn't bad this isn't a bad book and we're really more just talking about the genre in general now but like yeah i don't know try something out so, somebody do something different please yeah, I think one thing I did, like, okay, so Kane reminded me a lot of Zayden in, like, mm -hmm. his personality, right? Like, yeah. he's keeping secrets, but, like, it's secrets that are, for Kane, they're secrets that, like, 
she probably should know but like it's really not that big of a deal that he like didn't tell her the truth about certain things that's how i always feel in these books sometimes i'm just like why is she freaking out yeah and then like zayden like zayden is kind of like the same i guess but like he like did like a little bit more like treasonous stuff so like like real government crimes (laughs) Yeah, things that are also like a general, so that puts yeah in a tough spot. But I will say that when her mom did die in this book, I was like, I felt something that I did not feel for Violet's mom, um, yeah. and then I also was like, is this just Feyre's dad? <laughs> okay, yes, that's how I felt too. Yeah, um, because like, I mean, okay, so uh, yeah, another spoiler portion in here where we're gonna talk about like another book, right? Like. We've talked about in Akawar how it didn't really make sense that, like, her dad came back and stuff. So mm-hmm. I am, I mean, like, it was sad. There has to be consequences in these books. And so when her mom died, right. I was like, I'm kind of glad that she did because now she has to, like, go find these answers for herself. Yeah. And also her mom's not going to have some, like, weird, crazy, nonsensical right. contribution to the story because- later on. Because now her she doesn't know her lineage. She doesn't know that she doesn't need her mom's not even her real mom. Yeah. Um or at least she's suspecting that her mom's not her real mom. I'm yeah. Um, I am intrigued by that too. I'm like, is this immaculate conception? Like I'm I'm interested to see how Kate explains this in the next book. <laughs> um yeah, I think that um it's super like just I'm like like is she just like a baby that was found you know is she like um selena like when she was found just like laying on like a riverside or something like that Mm -hmm. um i also want to know like how they were able to identify her as the being because she's never shown any sort of exemplary power before other than her healing stuff Mm -hmm. right and then like the stuff that dagan and or dagan or however you say his name was kind of trying to teach her to do well right it can't be that out of place otherwise she like the first time she did it people would have been like right maybe not not out of place but not as like off-putting you know because she was doing healing and like right around her knew what she was doing too so like Mm -hmm. that's where i'm like it it can't be like that off-putting and i guess because there are witches that kind of like explains the general tolerance for like magic and stuff without immediately going to like oh she's fey um, right but yeah i i don't know we'll have to we'll have to see how they explain that i mean i don't know i don't know yeah i, I don't know either. at least at least they, at least i don't know yeah and at the end the author kind of points out the conundrum too right because it's like there's a prophecy and the prophecy is that like the only other true true born fae full fae will like kill the king um Mm -hmm. who's the only other full born fae so there i mean there's dialogue between the characters where they're trying to figure out like so it's like he my dad and they're like no he can't be your dad um and then it's like okay well then who the hell are your parents because like, there aren't anybody, there aren't even beings who have been alive in, like, the last millennia who could have, like, produced you. So how the hell did this happen? Which, like, right. I, so it's not, like, a plot hole. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's been acknowledged. So there has to be some sort of plot reasoning for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I am intrigued by that, honestly. So, like, that, that was one part where I'm like, okay, this is, I guess, like, part, a little bit of a deviation as mm-hmm. opposed to, like, a lot of times... I feel like secret lineages are like it like their dad shows up somewhere and they're like I'm your dad you know (laughs) I feel like okay this is I feel like because of the success of Akatar and Throne of Glass um the first book is formulaic and feels Mm -hmm. like these other books but I think that the second one will probably see some like deviation because yeah. now we have the background that we need and now the story can like really truly get started it's like throne yeah. of glass like throne of Gla- yeah. like the book throne of glass is a a segue for you to get into the rest of the story yeah it's a foundation yeah 
I'm almost wondering too. I'm like, is this gonna be like an Anakin Skywalker thing? Like she's just made out of midi chlorians. Oh my god. <laughs> Could you imagine? She's just made out of pixie dust. Out of star out of whatever the star falling. I, <laughs> that one thing he mentioned at the end. I don't right. Know. <laughs> um, I think too, like they only mention the prophecy really. I mean like they offhandedly mention it, but like the actual words within it, like only once, I think, full mm-hmm. fully in the story and like you can go back and read that but like i think the point of that is just it it, like as a mechanism in this first book is just to kind of lay out like her place in all of this Mm -hmm. um but i think the fact that it's only mentioned once means that it's not necessarily like important to this particular part but i think we'll see a lot more of that in like the next book like what all these different things mean as opposed to just like laying out generally what needs to happen or what's going to happen at the end and i also because of the prophecy itself i'm like so it basically says that like she's destined to die right which was part of his Mm -hmm. conundrum with like telling her and like falling in love with her because he knows what the outcome needs to be and he also is at towards the end more of like the i would destroy the world for you type of right infatuation love whatever and so like i do already know that because she's the main character there's going to be some sort of loophole to the prophecy or something she's not Mm -hmm. like i would assume that honestly people people might be haters about this but like i wouldn't be opposed to like her her dying or something Mm -hmm. you know i mean it, it was this, it's kind of the same thing with like Harry Potter, right? Like he, right. The, he's destined to die. There is some sort of way where he can like come back um, because people like happy endings. But mm-hmm. not me. Yeah. Um, okay, here's the prophecy. Let's let's dissect it and talk about yes. what we think each part means. Okay. Okay. So a world of light blessed across the stones. So light is like the power, right? So because mm-hmm. it's spelled with the e. Um. A kingdom doomed to fall at the hands of his second son. So that implies that there is a first son. (laughs) Yeah, okay, that's also a great... I mean, like, we offhandedly hear about his brother, but not, like... I'm sure there will be more development with that. Right. A city turned to ash and bone. So there's a city that's been decimated, right? It's, uh, the city that they're at has been decimated because the castle's gone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a, uh, the fallen star will mean war has once again begun. So they're. I thought what they were talking about was the eclipse, but I don't think that this has happened yet. This fallen star. Maybe that, or I mean, it's like... the comet of of Cyro from Akatar, or from Akatar, from um Avatar. So Sozin's comment. Okay, yeah, I was like, what the yeah. hell are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Sozin's comment. That or it's referring to like when she was born and he woke up and was like, I'm gonna go start a war with my dad. Maybe. Um, the final fae of full blood born at last. So she's born. She's alive. <laughs> Um, they uh, will find the blade of the sun inside her heart. Which is, I think, referring to her power, right? Her her abilities. Father and child will meet again in a war a half past century. So this war's been going on for 50 years. And now some father and child will meet. Whether that is actually Cain or his brother. Um, or uh, somebody else. I mean, like, fighting his dad who's fathered many children yeah or uh, who knows i yeah it could even be her and her father like it could be like no idea who her dad is Uh, yeah it's obviously not his dad right uh, because then i'm gonna have some qualms with (laughs) okay um and with the rise of the phoenix will the final battle start so i think somebody's gonna die and then come back um a king who can her mom perhaps mm, maybe anyway a king who can only meet his end at her hand so he can only die by her 
a girl who who knows what she must choose. So there's going to be some choice involved here. A sacrifice made to save both troubled lands. So she's going to have to... Somebody is going to have to sacrifice something to save the lands. Uh, without it, an entire realm will lose. So without her sacrifice, um, there will be loss. So like... She's going to have to choose between her sacrifice and letting everything lose. Yeah. Um, a, tra a tragedy for both full fae as such shall fall. So both of the full fae's are going to die. Alas, it is the price to pay to save them all. So. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. We, I, I don't know. I mean, it's with, a lot of prophecies like this in fantasy stories, like, there's a predictable way it will all unfold, but I feel like they do try and make, like, parts of it sneaky to where it's not what you're mm -hmm. expecting. So maybe the sacrifice isn't necessarily, like, her life, but, like, a relationship or the life of someone else. Um, you know, maybe there is some sort of loophole to the prophecy where, like, she doesn't have to die, right, or something like that, or, like, someone mm -hmm. else dies in her place. Phoenix rising from the ashes definitely seems like somebody reincarnating or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, like, so long and there's so many parts that, like, you never know which part is going to be, like, taken at face value and which part is, like secret i guess i one part right. that's kind of like a a subplot i would say that i'm interested to see in the next book because of the way it was set up is like her sister is relatively young um comparatively and with the loss of her mother and like this shocking realization that like her sister isn't really her sister perhaps like I think she's going to be going through adolescence a little bit and also the grief. And so I'm interested to see what the, di the dynamic is going to be like. Because I think her and her brother have an, a well enough established dynamic to where it won't be that much of an impact. But I think her sister is at like a really impressionable age mm -hmm. um, and spent so much time with her mom that like I think she's going to have some issues. Like I don't this is a weird comparison, but almost like how an Adarna acts in, like, mm -hmm. um, Iron Flame and stuff. She, like, I think she's going to be going through all this stuff while trying to, like, keep her family together, and her sister's going to be a problem. A pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, like, I don't see it going to the level of, like, betrayal or anything like that. I can't, I can't really, like, imagine that, but I do think it'll add some, like, pressure um, to a lot of the other things that are happening. Mm-hmm. And I'm also sure that, like, there's going to be some tensions between her brother and Cain to where they either have to, like, become buddies over something or it's just, like, another added stressor <laughs> to her right. life. Um, and I do think it's also just kind of probably inevitable that, like, her and Cain come back together. They spent so much time in this story building that up and, like, the love triangle that was there wasn't really, like, super strong. And so I can't see mm -hmm. that the author introducing another one but it's just going to be like a matter of building trust back but i feel like that's an inevitability right so yeah all right Ooh, whoa and that's our cue <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i don't have anything else to say i am looking forward to reading the next one so i don't yeah. know if we're gonna read it for the podcast yet we will figure it out we've got some other things in the works right now because we've got a lot of planning to do for june and july yeah so. lots of things going on in both of our lives outside the podcast right now but yeah. um I, at some point we will definitely both read i think through the rest of this series mm -hmm. if not on the podcast just so that we can like <laughs> gab about it right um, but i think even if we don't end up doing episodes on it maybe we'll like make a post or something where we give you guys mm -hmm. our, our thoughts just since we did start it but who knows we'll see yeah we'll see <laughs> um next week we will be reading the rule book also by the way like i i read this book like i actually like read it i didn't listen to the audiobook i actually read it isn't that crazy yeah. 
Look at us go. I have not read. I have not like actually sat down to read in like months because I've been so busy. But we are also going to be reading the rule book this week uh, for next week's episode. So yeah, this is Sarah Adams' new book. A little football romance. You know how we felt about Sarah Adams' last football romance. So hopefully this one's better. Yeah, we're going to hope some things have been learned. Yeah, All her other books are good. So All the other ones are good. I was just Brie, I hated her ass. I know. I know. Well, and this is this will be interesting too because it's more smut. It's more smut than the other ones, you know. Yeah. At least from what I've heard, so we'll have to see how she transitions. I guess mm-hmm. more so. I, I can I can't imagine it would be bad. I mean, she goes all the way up until that point in most mm-hmm. of her books, anyways. So um, I love I'm Sarah Adams. So yeah, I'm oh, super excited to read it. Um. Yeah, okay, you want to close us out here? I do. Uh, so if you want to check out our Instagram or our TikTok, uh, it's at the Witty Banter Book Club. We really just post stuff related to the co- the, the actual episodes um, for the podcast right now. Um, you know what, maybe when we have some more free time yeah. in the near future, uh, we'll, we'll make some more, like, fun extra content, but we've got a lot going on right now. So totally yeah, I'm planning, I'm much. planning an engagement party, a wedding, it's election season, and I work in politics, I have so much work going on, I have a little extra something going on, I've got, um, my podcast here, and then, like, just, like, every weekend, somebody's visiting me right now, so, like, I'm just so busy. I know. How does she do it? I'm um, just a, a yeah, a modern <laughs> Renaissance woman. <laughs> I'm tired. That's how I'm doing it. Is that I just I have not been sleeping. Me too, girl. Yeah, I'm, and for me, like finals are approaching. I'll be taking the bar this summer, so I might be looking a little different, a little <laughs> stressed. We'll call it stressed. <laughs> yeah, you'll see. There's a surprise in the works. Yeah, <laughs> for our loyal followers. Um, yeah. But anywho, um, yeah, so hopefully, you know, in a couple months from now, we'll have some time to crank out some extra stuff. But if you want to follow along with what we're reading and our reviews and stuff like that, go ahead and give us a follow on there. Um, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, if you're watching us on YouTube, also, thank you. Ah. Um, like, subscribe, comment, all the, all of those things. We greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah. and in the meantime, I think that's all I have to say, but, oh, also, P.S., thank you again, Kate Golden, for sending us this book. Yes, yes, thank you. If other authors want to, want to send us books. We can't be bought. We can't, we can't be bought. No. But if you want to send us your books. We will read them. Yeah. And I think we're pretty fair about this one. And I truly, I truly did enjoy this book. Yes. I, and honestly, even the stuff that we talked about here at the end wasn't necessarily related to this book in particular, but yeah. more of the genre. So um, yeah. I think it was a pretty good job, Kate. Yeah. Um, and we're very grateful. Thank you for sending mm-hmm. us all of the stuff that you sent as well. Uh, I love seeing artwork, uh, especially mm-hmm. when it's like author approved. So I know that that's how they pictured them. Right. You know, um, <laughs> um but yeah, we're we're really grateful for that. And if anybody else wants to send us books, let us know. Um, yeah. Email us. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think there's only one thing left to say, and that is happy, happy reading. reading.